Okay, so the next question that we have here is def is that we question number fourteen. Define a binary operation star on this set, and as uh, a star b is equal to. So basically, you know that the binary operation on this set, if you call this set, for example, and set a, for example, is equal to this, then the binary operation becomes a a binary operation star on the set a to a meaning that you have the Cartesian product of a and a and a the Cartesian product of a and a becomes these the, these ordered pairs as for example 0 comma 0 0 comma 1 0 comma 2 0 comma 3 0 comma 4 0 comma 5 1 comma 0 1 comma 1 1 comma 2 1 comma 3 all the way up to 5 comma 5 so that that would be basically the domain of your function the 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 codomain of your function would be the set a that means that all of those order pairs are mapped to some element in the set a right so that is a that is what the binary operation is now the binary operation has to be defined in some way of course there is no way not to define it because otherwise there is no makes that it, it makes no sense to it, it makes no sense to where to define a binary operation. When you define a binary operation, you have to define it. And in this particular case, the binary operation has been defined as a, 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 a star b. And please note that a star b is the same thing as the star of a comma b, right? So this a comma b comes from this set which is basically all of those order pairs 0 comma 1 0 comma 2 the 0 comma 3 and so on and so forth all the way up to 5 comma 5 so a comma a star b is this is the same thing as star of a comma b right now a star b is the same thing as a plus b if this is the case and a plus b plus 6 and if this is the case right so that's that's the situation and then what you what you want to show and i don't like this color really that much what you want to show is that you want to show that zero is the ident is the identity for this operation so what that means is that um is that if basically if some element is the identity for some operation that means that you take if you take any element from this set if you take any any element from this set and if you take the star of that element with the identity in any order you are supposed to get the same thing right you are supposed to get the same thing meaning that meaning that in order to sh to to and of course in order to show that this is the case you have to write this in terms of a condition a mathematical condition and then prove that condition so one i want to show that zero is the identity for this operation meaning that to show that to show that basically a star star zero is the same thing as 0 star a is equal to a and that is for all a belonging to the set a for all and that is for basically that is for for all a belonging to for all a belonging to a right so what that means is that now if you understand that the situation you will be able to write this condition and if you if you are and 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 and, and as a result you will be able to 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 prove the condition whether it's whether it's true or false and that 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 basically means that you have solved the problem so it's that simple but then but then in order to understand the situation you have to understand the concept
the whole concept of basically a binary operation. So over here, when we say that uh, basically, when we say that basically, um, a star b, a star zero, uh, so then as you can see, basically based on the based on definition of a star b, we will get two cases for each of these for for the right hand side and for the late left hand side of this equation, meaning that I can write meaning that basically the for example the right hand side of this equation LHS or I'm sorry the right hand side of this equation the, the RHS is the same thing as zero star A. Now zero star A I can write it in two different ways. I can write it as I can write it as basically zero plus zero plus a if basically zero plus a is less than six and I can write it as zero plus a plus six if zero if basically if zero plus a is greater than or equal to six, right? So uh, so what that means is that then um, then I have to I have to consider this condition for both of these cases, and then I have to basically evaluate this the right hand side of this equation for both of these cases. Meaning that uh, meaning that now basically we have two cases over here. We have basically we have two cases. Case one would be that would be that basically a plus b, which means that in this case zero plus a zero plus a is less than six, and case two. And case two would be that would be that a plus b, which is basically which is basically zero plus a, is greater than or equal to six, right? Now, if this is the case, in case one, basically a star b is equal to a plus b. So in case one, we know that basically zero star zero star a is equal to is equal to zero times is equal to a times a plus b a plus b which is equal to which is equal to which is equal to basically zero plus a in case two we know that zero star a is the same thing as zero plus a um plus six right if that is greater than or equal to six plus six so so what that means is that um so this zero plus a is equal to a and zero plus a plus six is equal to a plus six right now the left hand side of this equation, the left hand side of this equation LHS is equal to basically a star a star zero. And again we have two cases over here. We have two cases over here, case one, either basically zero case one which is zero basically a plus zero is basically less than six and case two that is basically again uh, basically um, a plus zero a plus zero is greater than or equal to six right 
and of course you can say that over here you can you can say that a is is a is less than six and a is greater than or equal to six so that that basically means that right that you already understand now if basically in 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 case one in case one you can say that you can say that basically um, a star zero a star zero is the same thing as a plus zero which is equal to a and in case two basically a star zero is equal to a plus zero plus six or or a plus zero plus six which is equal to a plus a plus six and of course you know you can see that for case one where basically a is less than six so from this you can you can basically you can basically conclude that for basically case one when you put all of these together meaning that if you separate these if you separate these basically these two these two different things these two different procedures you can see that case one is the case where basically is is where a is less than six again over here you can see that a is less than six right so in that case so therefore you can say that basically when when a is less than six then what happens in both of in both of these cases when you put them together you will get that this is case one this is case one zero star a is equal to star is equal to a star zero is equal to a in both cases when a is less than six zero star zero star a is equal to a star zero a star zero is equal to a right and also when a is greater than or equal to six then as you can see here you can see that basically zero star a is equal to a plus six a star zero is equal to a plus six right so zero star a is equal to a star zero is equal to a star zero is equal to a plus six right so either basically a is less than six or a is greater than or equal to six if a is less than six then then basically zero is the identity element for this operation if a is greater than or equal to six then again zero is the identity for this operation meaning that uh, Of course, that's not the case here. That is not the case here. Let's see. Okay, so now basically there is there is actually we have no problem here because as you can see a basically a belonging to basically the binary operation star has been defined on this set right and this set contains all of the elements 0 through 5 0 1 2 3 or 5 meaning that at most the element that you pick here can be can be equal to 5 right and um, if you basically pick the element to be in case basically in case two so over here we have we said that basically to show that a star zero is equal to zero star a is equal to a for for a for all a belonging to a and we want to show this right so now the RHS becomes basically zero star A is equal to, and then we have two cases. 
actually we don't have actually two cases I would have actually erased this video I mean I would have rewinded a little bit back and then go and then gone back but this is something that that you can learn something from meaning that I did not actually have to consider two cases from the very beginning because whatever a might be that I that I that I take from here whatever a might a might be that I take from here 0 through 5 um, since since one of the elements is basically since one of the elements is zero anyway the the basically a plus b is always less than is always less than six it is always less than six so that that means that basically i always have to consider only this case and this case is not is not relevant here in this case in in this in this particular case the second clause of this of this of this binary operation is just not relevant because a plus b is always less than six right which means that basically in um when when a is greater than or equal to zero of course a is a a plus a a zero zero star a is equal to a, a star zero is a plus six which means that zero is not the identity element for this operation but that's not relevant because uh, because basically the because this case because case number two actually never occurs in this in this whole process so so basically uh, so you can you can simply forget about this this part you can simply forget about and you can say that therefore a star a a star zero is equal to zero star a is equal to a uh, basically for all a for all a belonging to belonging to a you can you can actually write this statement there is no problem with that and therefore zero is the is the identity element is the identity element for the, the operation star for the operation star so that's basically part one of this question right now part two of this question is you want to show that basically each element a not equal to zero of the set is invertible with six minus a being the inverse of a right you want to show that each element a not equal to zero of the set is invertible with six minus a being the inverse so if i want to show that so part two of the question would be to show that each element of the set is invertible with is invertible with the inverse of that element being six minus a and of course a not equal to zero i have to write basically um, each element belonging to that set to that set if you take the star of that element with the inverse of the with the inverse of that element that's going to be the identity element right meaning that we need to show that let me write another another statement over here basically to show that to show that every element every a not equal to zero belonging to belonging to a is invertible is invertible with a inverse is equal to with a inverse is equal to 6 minus a we have the following so basically the general con so in this in these cases if you don't want to confuse yourself what you can do is that you can just simply write the general condition that you know about a, an element being invertible 
and then based on that statement you can write another statement specific to this to this particular situation meaning that for example in a general case you can say that uh, you can say that a a star b is equal to b star a is equal to e if that is the case if this is the, if this is the case then basically and 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 basically by this you 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 can you, you understand that i that what i mean is that a is you have some some set for example a i have some set a for example that is for all for all a b and e belonging to a right so I have some set A, A belongs to A, B belongs to A, and E belongs to A, E, e, the, e, e is the identity element on the operation star, and A and B are just two elements in the, in that set A. If this is the case, then we can say that basically, um, then we can say that basically, um, A is invertible with respect to the operation star. So then we can say that, then we can say that, that A is invertible, is invertible with respect to the operation, to the operation star, to the operation star. And what what else we can say over here if this is the case and also we can say that and and also we can say that basically um uh, so and and so in this case for example you can say that you can say that and b is the is the inverse of a is the inverse of a and also we can say that also we can say that basically that uh, that over here we said that a is invertible so also we can say that that b is invertible is invertible with respect to the operation star to the operation star and basically a is the is the inverse of b a is the inverse of b is the inverse of b so this is basically something general that you can use wherever you go in these binary operations, right? Now what you want to do here is you want to show that basically this is the case, meaning that you want to show that every A not belonging to zero, belonging to the set A, is invertible with A inverse is equal to six minus A, meaning that the, the inverse of A is six minus A, and uh, a is not equal to zero so then you can just now simply change this 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 condition a little bit and um, and get to the get to the to the to the to the to the condition that you want to prove right so over here i have to write basically i have to write so so so, so in order to prove this in order to prove two we need to show that we need to show that basically um, we need to show that a star b meaning that the element that you want to we want that you want to show um, that you want to show is invertible for example it happens to be a here so a star and then you have to write the inverse of that element the inverse of that element happens to be 
a inverse is equal to a inverse as you can see here a inverse star a and that is equal to the to the identity element in that set the identity element in this set we we establish that the identity element in in this set with respect to this to the operation star was zero right so i have to write zero over here and that is for all that is for all a belonging to the set a for example now i happen to know that basically a inverse is equal to is, is six minus a and over here we know that a is not equal to zero right so i happen to know that a inverse is six minus a so i can write a a star six minus a is equal to a inverse actually in, instead of a inverse i can write i can write six minus a star a is equal to zero for all a belonging to a a not equal to zero right so now i have come up with some and this is not actually right so now we have come up with now we have come up with some with something something mathematical that we can prove otherwise all thoughts that all thoughts that you might have are just thoughts in the air you cannot get hold of them but then if you know how to go basically logically and step by step from one thing to another thing then of course you can you can you can solve any sort of problem that is given to you it's not it's not i mean mathematics is not complicated um it's not easy but it's not complicated meaning that just simply some step after the other some step after the other and then you will get to whatever it is that you want to get to so so now what this means is that what this means is that uh, now over here we know that a is not equal to zero right and I have a star six minus a, right? Now over here we said that basically we have this we had this condition over here that we had a star b is equal to a plus b and a plus b plus six. Over here we had a star b is equal to a plus b and a plus b plus six. And this is for this is for the case when basically a plus b is less than six. This is for the case a plus b is less than six, and this is for the case a plus b is greater than or equal to six, right? Now you can see over here. This is this is actually the this is actually some some piece of information that we had from before so it has actually nothing to do with this with this expression over here so what that means is that then you can see that if a is not equal to zero a is some element other than zero belonging to the set a which is equal to basically one two three actually there is zero over there as well zero one two three four Five, if, if I'm not mistaken, zero through five, right? So what that means is that basically, um, what that means is that a plus a plus b in this case would be some element from this set other than zero plus six minus a. For example, you can take one. And you would have one plus, for example, six minus one, which is equal to, which is equal to basically, uh, one plus six minus, six minus one is equal to, is equal to basically, um, so that would be equal to, for example, one plus six minus one which would be basically one plus one plus five which is equal to six 
if you have 2 over here then you have 2 plus for example 6 minus 2 which is equal to 4 plus 2 is equal to 6 if you have 3 plus 6 minus 3 you would have basically 3 plus 3 is equal to 6 and so on and so forth it seems that if, if you go all the way up to 5 which means that if you take 5 plus 6 minus 5 you would get 5 plus 1 is equal to 6 right so it seems that for all of these elements I have to use this part of the this clause of the of the of the binary definition meaning that the definition of the binary operation star meaning that I have to use a plus b plus 6 for all of these for basically to evaluate this this expression because in all of these cases as you can see a plus b is equal to is equal to 6 and 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 this is this is the right clause to to use right so what that means is that so what that means is that then based on that I will evaluate this a plus 6 minus a as as basically a plus b plus 6 so that would be a plus 6 minus a plus 6 and and then this side over here so I can I can actually write this as I can actually write the for example the left hand side as a star a star 6 minus a is equal to a plus 6 minus a plus 6 which is equal to 0 and the right hand side is again the same thing the right hand side is 6 minus a star 0 which is a plus b plus 6 which is 6 minus a plus a plus 6 which is again equal to 0 that means that the left hand side is equal to right hand side which means that basically um, which means that every element of basically every element which basically means that every every a not equal to zero belonging to belonging to a is invertible is invertible with with a inverse is equal to is equal to what was the what was the inverse six minus a a inverse is equal to six minus a where basically a is not equal to zero and e is equal to is equal to zero belonging to a right so that is basically the conclusion. So, so that is basically how you solve this problem. Okay. Now the next question that we have here is um, is question number the question number fourteen. I'm sorry, question number 15. Okay, so the next question that we have is question number 15, which is basically we have two sets um, and we have two functions, right? So question number 15 is basically A is some set basically as negative 1, 0, 1 and 2 and b is another set which contains negative 4 negative 2 negative 4 negative 2 0 and 2 and f f and g are functions from a to b f and g are functions from a to b defined by Defined by basically f of x is equal to x squared minus x for all x belonging to a and g of x is equal to 
2 times the absolute value of x minus 1 half x minus 1 half minus 1 for all x belonging to a and now you want to know whether basically f and g are equal now as a definition that, that that you might be interested in and of course you have to be interested in that because otherwise you don't know what what equal functions are basically two functions f from a to b so two functions so now basically i, I don't want to get ahead of myself so over here you note that basically the question that we want to that we want to answer is r basically f and g f and g equal right r f and g equal so as a definition you can say that basically two functions f from a to b two functions f from f from a to b and and g as a function from a to b meaning that the meaning that the domains of these two functions are the same the codomains are the same um, such that such that f of a is equal to f of a is equal to g of a for all a belonging to a are called equal functions are called equal functions meaning that the meaning that the shape of the functions might be different of course and of course by the same logic you can say that for example if f is a function from a to b and f of x is equal to for example x squared and g of x is equal to x squared are of course equal functions as well meaning that the shape of the function are the same or the shape of the functions could be different but the but the but the important thing here is that the output of the function the value of the output of the function for every one of these a's belonging to the to the domain of the functions to the domains of the functions which happens to be the same set is essentially it's essentially the same meaning that f of a is equal to g of a for for all a belonging to a so then in that case these are called equal functions so now what we want to do is that we want to to verify whether f and g are equal functions now i don't really know how i would go about solving that problem because because then i mean of course there is the possibility that you check f of x for each of these inputs that's possible but let's see if there is better way of solving the problem well i cannot think of a i cannot think of a Well, of course, one way to to solve the problem is 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 by taking a look at the graph of the two functions, meaning that, of course, that you can do that that, that I would do, meaning that, I would go over here to some graphing, to some graph and and graph the two functions, and then of course using the graph you can simply say and if the two functions go from negative 1 to 2 in the natural numbers and then the outputs of the function go from negative 4 to 2 right it's supposed to be that way i mean as long as they are functions of so you 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 should have no problem there so now let's take a look at the function for example x squared minus x 
meaning that let's say that you have f of x is equal to let's say that you have the function f of f of you have the function f of x is equal to is equal to x squared minus x and this goes for all x's from negative 1 to 2 right so that means that for all x's from negative 1 to 2 you have this is this is basically the outputs of the function from negative 1 to 2 that go from basically that go from basically somewhere about 0 point negative 0 0.25 all the way up to 2 and as as you can see the function is actually not on 2 meaning that uh, for example you have negative 4 over here but negative 4 is down here as is, and is not really the the image of any is not the image of any um, is not the image of any element in the domain of the function but essentially the the function goes for basically the 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 output of the function is such meaning that if you have f of x is equal to x squared minus x then from negative one all the way to two and remember that this is just about basically whole numbers or integers i would say so for negative 1, the output of the function is here, for 0 is here, for 1 is here, and for 2 is here. So only these four points are, are important. Other than that, nothing is important. Now, if I do basically, if I do the graph of this function, which is basically, I don't really know how to do the absolute value function here, but let's see. Um, the absolute value function you can write it this way so I can write f of g of g of x is equal to 2 times the absolute value of x 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1 half x minus 1 half and that was basically then minus 1 right and uh, basically that then then you have basically this function over here this is basically the other function that you have and you can see that basically the outputs of the two functions at x is equal to negative one is are exactly the same at x is equal to zero are exactly the same at x is equal to one are exactly the same at x is equal to two are exactly the same and for the same reason you can call them equal functions right so that's that's how you would check of course this is simple for a function that you can actually it's just a couple of points that you can see on a graph but then of course it's possible to do something using algebra in order to check whether whether which would be actually interesting to do to do something using algebra to check whether all the inputs of for example two different functions over a over a certain domain are exactly the same or not which is something that most probably you can only do using calculus we will get to we will get there hopefully so i mean we have only a couple of questions here and then we will after that we will get to calculus that that sort of thing is most probably possible only using calculus i have never actually done such a thing using algebra i don't really know if that's possible using only and only simple algebra uh, but it must actually be possible using calculus so we will we will get there but then you can now write down the, the same thing meaning that you can take a look at the graph and then you can say that for example f of for example negative 1 is equal to g of negative 1 is equal to 2 and f of for example 0 is equal to g of 0 is equal to 0 and f of 1 is equal to g of 1 is equal to 0 again and f of 2 is equal to g of 2 is equal to 2 and so 
As a result of that, then you have shown that the two functions are equal. That's how you would solve this problem. If you want to, to, to see the function, to, to, to see the solution written down, you can go to the solutions that you can find on the TWAR Academy. It's very simple. We don't have to spend any more time on this. But it's, but it's, it's important to understand the, the definition of a, of, of equal functions. And it's also interesting to note that, uh, that, uh, um, that there is basic, there is something that, that, um, that, um, we don't know how to do with algebra, but then most probably we'll be able to do it using calculus. But, but until we get there, <laughs> We'll have to wait for a. We'll have to wait for a little for a little while. Okay. So question number sixteen. We are slowly getting to the to the end of these questions. It's taking a lifetime, really. So question number sixteen is basically let A be some set. For example, A A contains one, two, and three, and and the number of relations containing 1 comma 2 and 1 comma 3 which are reflexive and symmetric but not transitive are okay so considering this case then the number of the number of relations containing containing 1 comma 2 and 1 comma 3 which are reflexive and symmetric which are reflexive and symmetric are or is is basically we need to calculate them so so basically in order to calculate the number of relations on this set that are reflexive and symmetric so basically you 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 know that basically the cartesian product of a and a is basically this set containing all of these ordered pairs as one comma one and one comma two and one comma three and then you have two comma one and then you have two comma two and then you have two comma three and you have three comma one you have three comma two and you have basically three comma three so this is the this is the Cartesian product of the two of, of the set with itself, which contains nine elements. Three times three would be nine, right? Now you you are looking for 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 the relations on this set, meaning a subset of this set that contains these two elements. Call it, for example, R one, which contains these two elements one comma two and one comma three. And it is also reflexive and it is also reflexive and symmetric. So in order to make this reflexive, basically for every element that belongs to A, uh, basically for, for every, I write it mathematically, for every A belonging to, belonging to A, A comma A has to belong to R. This means reflexive, which means that 1 comma 1 has to belong to R, 2 comma 2 has to belong to R, 3 comma 3 has to belong to R. This means that it is reflexive. And if you want to make it symmetric, then of course for these elements you have no proof. So for symmetric that means that for every A and B, for every A and B belonging to A, um, for every, for every A and a and B belonging to A, A comma B belonging to R implies that B comma A belongs to, belongs to R. 
meaning that for example if 1 comma 2 belongs to r then 2 comma 1 has to belong to r as well and 3 comma 1 belo 1 comma 3 belongs to r that that implies that 3 comma 1 has to belong to r as well and so on and so forth and so for 1 comma 1 you have no problem because it's already a symmetric it's already symmetric with respect to this element to this element and to this element so this is some relation on this set which is a set which is a subset of this set which uh, basically is is symmetric it is reflexive and it and it contains these two elements so you have you already have basically six and seven elements over here so now you need to you need to note down the number of elements that you have already used so you have already used one comma one 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 and you have already used basically 1 comma 2 and 1 comma 3 and then you have already used 2 comma 1 and 3 comma 1 so these two elements are missing from this set now you need to basically what you need to do is very carefully add these elements to this set and see what happens and and and, and Basically, you need to add it in such a way that, that, that the relation remains reflexive and symmetric. And this condition is already kept because you're not removing, you're not removing these three elements, meaning that 1 comma 1, 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 3 comma 3, you're not removing them. So the relation remi remains, I'm sorry, you, these two you're not removing, meaning that 1 comma 2, 1 comma 3 is not is not uh, um, these two are not removing that means that this condition is kept and you're not removing one comma two two one comma one two comma two and three comma three that means that it remains reflexive so the only thing that you check is that 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 it remains symmetric right so which means that I write R1 is equal to basically 1 comma 2 and 1 comma 3 and 1 comma 1 and 2 comma 2 and 3 comma 3 and 2 comma 1 and 3 comma 1. Now I need to add 2 comma 3 here. You can of course, you can of course start from any, any one of these. But if I, if I add 2 comma 3 in order for this relation to remain ref symmetric, 3 comma 2, so it seems that 2 comma 3 is already there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There is some problem here. That is supposed to be 3 comma 3. I apologize. That is supposed to be 3 comma 3, 2 comma 1 and 3 comma 1. And now if I add 2 comma 3 here, 3 comma 2 is supposed to be here as well, which is not. So I add that here, 3 comma 2, right? And now this relation is symmetric. Which means that if I had started from which which I had started from this element, then I would have then I would have had to 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 add this element as well, meaning that I would I would either I I mean the the the, the highest number of elements that the highest number of relations that I can have on this set <coughs> that basically contains these two elements and is reflexive and symmetric is only these two, meaning that anyway you would you would end up with either this set and this set and there is no other such relation that you can define on this set which means that the, the correct answer is 2 and so question number 16 the uh, basically the, the 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 correct answer is um,
Oh, there is one other condition here. There is one other condition here, and the other condition is that the the, the relation is not is not supposed to be transitive. I didn't see actually that condition. So it is supposed to be is it's supposed to be reflexive and symmetric but but not transitive right so if it's supposed to be not transitive of course then you then 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 you normally basically what you can do so i i will i will erase this one so then what i will do is that Transitive basically means that for every A, B, and C belonging to A, A comma B belonging to R and and B comma C belonging to R, that implies that basically A comma C also belongs to R, right? So this relation over here, you can see that for example, you can, I mean, it's enough to find one example in which basically this is not the case and then that would mean that the the relation is not transitive for example 1 comma 2 2 comma 1 1 comma 1 exists so so with respect to these two elements you have no problem the relation is 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 transitive uh, 1 comma 2 2 comma 2 and 1 comma 2 belongs to r so we have no problem there now 1 comma 3 3 comma 1 1 comma 1 belongs to r so we have no problem there so 1 comma 3 again belongs to r we have no problem there and uh, so this is this is some 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 somewhat alone meaning that but 1 comma 1 and 1 comma 2 1 comma 2 belongs to r so we have no problem there 2 comma 2 and 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 two comma one so two comma one is there is no problem there and three comma three three comma one so three comma one is there so you have no problem two comma one and so two comma one is there two comma three so you can see that if you take these two elements <laughs> If you take these two elements 2 comma 1 and 1 comma 3 then you would need 2 comma 3 there so that so that your relation is transitive which is of course not there so that means that this relation is actually transitive now if I add 2 comma 3 to this relation as you as you saw before if I add 2 comma 3 to this relation then I would then I would have to add 3 comma 2 so that it remains symmetric then it becomes then then it becomes transitive basically which is which is which is basically not supposed to be so that means that basically if I add 3 comma 1 I cannot add 3 comma 1 here and then there is the problem that um, So that's basically it, meaning that if I, if I, if I, um, so 2 comma 1 and 1 comma 3, so then you would add 2 comma 3 over here. If I add 2 comma 3 over here, then since the relation is not, is not transitive, I cannot actually, I cannot add this element because then, because then the relation becomes transitive and then we will get into, into trouble, right? But then we need to, uh, but then we need to, we need to check for another condition here as well, meaning that 3 comma 1 and 3 comma 1, 3 comma, 3 comma 2 is already, is already there. So you see that if I add, if I add 3 comma 2 here, suppose that I add 3 comma 2 to this, to this to this uh, basically to this um, if I add 3 comma 2 to this relation right 
if I add 3 comma 2 to this relation for this to remain symmetric I have I would have to add 2 comma 3 as well and then when I add 2 comma 3 then the relation becomes transitive which is not allowed so that means that basically the only relation that you can that you can generate here su such that it contains basically these two elements and is and is reflexive symmetric but not transitive is actually only one which means that the correct answer is choice A. Choice A is the correct answer there. So that's basically how you solve this problem. And as you can see, these are a little bit tricky, meaning that you have to check everything manually. But, um, but of course, there is always algebra, meaning that... Uh, um, you can always use algebra in order to check all of these things, but sometimes just to, to understand, just to, to make sure that you have understood the, the concept, then, then there is a couple of these as well. Now, question number 17 is basically, again, let's say that A is basically, A is some, let me actually do this in the next video. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.